basically in this uh, lab, like I said, we make small earthquakes. We're interested in the physics of earthquakes, how do physics or how do earthquakes start? What happens once the earthquake has initiated and the rupture is propagating along the fault? Where does that energy go? And uh, we're getting into how does why does the earthquake stop? If you look in the machine, the the blue steel frame around is it's a steel loading frame. It doesn't move, but it, it confines the experiment. The granite blocks are tipped over on their side, and the fault, the two meter fault, is the diagonal that runs the length of the uh, uh, the space in the blue machine, and it's covered with various sensors. Some of the sensors are labeled slip 16, 13, 10. Those are position sensors that measure slip across the fault all along the fault. I have strain gauges that measure shear strain all along the fault, and I have some accelerometers and piezoelectric uh, sensors that measure acoustic emissions too. This is uh, the other other piece of equipment in my lab, and in this machine, I use much smaller samples of rock here, and in this machine, uh, uh, I look at the microscopic, microscopic aspects of friction as it relates to earthquake physics. And the way this machine works is there's a yellow hydraulic ram there that squeezes the samples together. This way applies a normal stress to actually two faults in there, and this hydraulic ram pushes the center block between those two side blocks at a fixed rate. And the, the whole point of this machine is to study the detailed uh, aspects of friction related to fault slip rate, uh, normal stress on a fault, fault roughness, different fault materials, and this kind of thing. It's very easy to change these samples and change experiment parameters. It's very difficult to change the experiment on the other machine. So here at the USGS in the earthquake program, we're very fortunate to have a very diverse group of researchers. There is the experimental laboratory work. There are people that use computer simulations to study, uh, to simulate and study earthquakes. And there's the seismic network and of course people that, that look at uh, earthquake uh, uh, signals as they come in and, and analyze the real the, the real earthquake data. In the earthquake program, uh, what we specialize in is recreating the, the conditions in the earth where earthquakes occur. So they're buried down deep in the earth, there's high pressure, high temperature, high water fluid pressure. So we can reproduce all those conditions in our machines in the lab under controlled conditions. This would be a sample that we would test here under high pressure in, in our testing equipment. Or if we wanted to study a fault, this, is, this would be our version of a, of a fault that uh, we would put a sample together like this with a bit of material that either from a fault zone or from the surface of the earth that we wanted to understand what the properties of that material was. So we'd, so we'd put the sample together and we put it in a pressure vessel and apply confining pressure to squeeze it together, which is similar to the, how deeply the sample would be buried in the earth, where the earthquake would nucleate. And then we push on the end of the sample and cause it to shear like that. And so that shearing would be motion on the, on the fault surface that we want to recreate earthquake motion. So here, here's a sample that uh, one of the things that we do here is essentially do seismic studies. So, so this is a, a sample that we would put transducers around the sample and record the ultrasonic signal that occurs every time a grain breaks on the surface or, or within the sample. And so it's, it's an array of ultrasonic sensors. It's a, essentially a miniature seismic array. So we can locate these miniature earthquakes that happen in this sample and study the progression of uh, damage and breakage in the sample leading up to, to the fracture of the sample.